I fired up my Steam Deck this morning because I installed Windows 11. I've been doing some testing here and there, and I tried to play The Division 2, which is one of the games I've spent a lot of time on. And I saw a notification as the game fired up that the hardware did not meet the minimum specific requirements to play the game. I bring this up because I really want to call bull or cap on this talk that the Series S is actually not a capable machine to play video games. A lot of the people that are talking about the technological side of things, you fail to realize that developers can be quite amazing at their job when given enough time. This is, in my opinion, an insult to the development teams themselves when you say that a hardware you know, skew is something that they can't put a game on. And I think we need to basically put this argument to rest because it's a very silly one. And the reason I'm also talking about this is because of Black Myth Wukong. Remember, this same Steam Deck right that did not meet the minimum requirements to run the division two can still run it by the way if you lower a lot of your settings and with good optimization whereas this same steam Deck can run a game like black myth wukong to people saying things like well the series s cannot run black myth wukong we know that there is a lot more power in the series s than the steam deck even though the ram you know qualifications in terms of that are actually quite less however there are ways to work around a lot of these limitations. This is the beauty of software engineering at the end of the day. The example I think that is of prime importance as well is the fact that Dragon's Dogma 2 has then improved its own frame rates and resolution settings from what it had at launch and even in its first patch. If you look very carefully, right now the Series S is prioritizing anywhere from 35 to 40 FPS at 1440p if you actually prioritize performance if you prioritize graphics the game will lock itself at 30 to 35 fps this in my opinion is an improvement even the series s sorry even the series x and the ps5 have also received improvements where you can now take your frame rates higher at higher resolutions so in my opinion i strongly believe that the series s is actually a capable device i don't own one i got the series x but in looking at the way hardware you know, and software interactions have been going and even thinking more and more about the way games eventually go back and get optimized, like Starfield running at 60 FPS even on the Series S and the developers over at you know, GSC Game World saying that they're going to try their best to get Stalker to run at 60 FPS on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I said Nintendo Switch on the Series S. I can't help but think about even the Nintendo Switch, which is uh, that was a Freudian slip, but it's right here. Mortal Kombat 11, which is a game that requires a 60 FPS gameplay because of the frame data and, you know, fighting games, it runs at 60 FPS on a Nintendo Switch. And this, I think, was the very first thing that kind of opened my eyes to the fact that you can actually make your game run at 60 FPS on most machines. Now, here's the catch. You will have to sacrifice texture art detail, VFX, you know, detail, and all, a lot of things, you may even have to rework some code in specific versions to be able to run more efficiently on things like the CPU or be able to maybe leverage GPU in terms of doing pre-shader compilation in all kinds of weird ways. Maybe while a cutscene is playing, you might tell, you know, or give instructions to start compiling code for, say, the next level or compiling shaders for the next level that you're about to load in. All of these gimmicks are quite possible. Another one, too, is Diablo 3. Diablo 3 runs at 60 FPS on the Switch. Now, yes, the version that you'll see is going to be a less detailed version, however, for smooth gameplay, and the fact that someone's going to be playing it on a handheld, I don't think people will really care nor, you know, be bothered. If they want to play Diablo, they realize and understand that they're playing on a Nintendo Switch. Then the final one is Mortal Kombat 1. Mortal Kombat 1 actually had some of the worst, you know, in terms of, I, I wouldn't say worst, I would say funny textures and stuff, but then they patched it and they gave a little bit more in terms of texture detail. If you notice, Johnny Cage, you know, basically flipping off those who say that the Series S is an incapable, I'm just joking, Johnny Cage's face pretty much shows that this patch made a difference in terms of bringing more in terms of, uh, you know, character detail and, you know, quality. However, there is somewhere that, you know, a sacrifice, or I guess something has been sacrificed to achieve this in terms of maybe reducing lods and, you know, all of the above. And you can already see that, you know, there's a difference already. I mean, it's improved in quote, but at the end of the day, you can already tell that there is something going on here. The code has probably become more and more optimized and developers are capable of continuing working on their game while given enough time to get it done. I say this to say that 
the notion that Black Myth Wukong has been delayed because of the series, series S is pure BS. Just letting you guys know the fact that they released the game or the fact that people are continuing to say that, oh, it's a Series S is nonsense. If the developers were saying we don't have enough time yet to basically get to optimizing both of them, then that's fine. But for us to basically put everything on the Series S is nonsense. We also have to entertain the possibility that PlayStation prioritized the port in terms of maybe finding a way to put money out there. And even if they didn't, it still does not, you know, say, oh, the Series S is holding the generation back because that's a whole bunch of hokey. At the end of the day, I think what we're seeing here is some console elitism, elitism where people are saying, oh, well, our hardware is better than yours. And they just want to constantly make the, you know, this Xbox Series S look like this problem. When in reality, I think from a value and a budget perspective, it really is the console that makes a whole lot of sense for anybody who's trying to come into this new generation and be able to leverage games that are locked inside of it. I mean, think about it. You already are going to pay close to $300 for a, you know, a console. And then at the end of the day, what's going to be required of you is that you pay subscription costs. I think the Series S really does make sense from that perspective that at the end of the day, you're still enjoying gaming and leveraging all of that while you're still able to play games that are in a different generation. So in my opinion, let's call it what it is, man. The Xbox Series S is a decent hardware. There's nothing wrong with it. Seeing developers be capable of actually, you know, optimizing for much lower hardware and being able to run games at higher, you know, frame rates and even be able to even add more texture detail after time goes on, to me is indicative of there is something to be said about good optimization for a video game. And a lot of the video games that we've played in the past, yes, we played them in 30 FPS, but they had very high quality and high detail. Even those, you know, quality metrics and detail metrics and asset metrics could have at any point stunted the game from even running at a, you know, a clean 30 FPS or depending on the frame, depending on what you're looking at, 33.3 milliseconds in frame time calculations. But the developers still optimize the games to actually do that by doing, you know, all kinds of gimmicks and ensuring that their code base was as efficient and effective as possible because they already knew that they had hardware that was very limiting at the point. Again, I think this is very important to highlight that as developers can sit and work on their games, they're able to be, you know, they're able to do really cool things, you know, with it. Even the Baldur's Gate 3 developer said that, you know, before they could bring, I think it was uh, Divinity or Original Sin to the Nintendo Switch, they said they worked on that port for many, many years and were eventually able to get it. And that's, I think, what it is. It's just time that's required, knowledge that's required, improvements in software, optimization, your engine may be doing some things that's costing you, you know, a lot of overhead. And you have to basically work, you know, on ways to find, uh, you know, measures to be able to deal with that, you know. And so there's just so many things that could be done to be able to get the hardware to do very well. But these are my thoughts on the matter. I really wanted to go ahead and make this video because I'm sick and tired of all this talk about the Series S from a lot of folk who are not interested in actually learning what, you know, the hardware and the software interactions are. Because if I tell these people, hey, go watch a video on optimization from Unreal Engine's YouTube channel for like 30 minutes, many of them are going to say, no, we don't want to watch that video. It's not our job to know what is going on. But it's your mouth that you want to use to comment on things that, you know, at the end of the day, when we actually check, we'll see that you're willfully not, you know, in a sense, just uh, it's not you're willfully ignorant about it because you refuse and you, you, you actively refuse to actually do the work in looking at what this stuff is all about. So I'm glad, actually, this this is something that is a positive for me as somebody who is a wannabe game developer that actually we can do the work to squeeze our game or, you know, or run our game on hardware that may not necessarily seem like, you know, it's capable of running games with whatever, you know, engine you want to talk about. Now, I think Unreal Engine 5 is one of those that takes a punching from, you know, a lot of people. But in my opinion, I think for now is there's just not a lot of knowledge in the general sense to be able to you know deal with the the wide plethora of video games that are being made as time goes on knowledge base from real engine 5 is going to really really permeate the industry because epic games is winning with it but again it's their engine so they kind of can make modifications and stuff that you know maybe people may not be too aware of because the engine code base is you know given to you right it's just like a generic code base you can then download that engine code base and make as many modifications as you want as long as the license is within you know license terms are within uh you know respectable measures but those modifications can actually get you what it is that you need and i don't think a lot of people right now are finding uh a lot of individuals who are well 
well knowledgeable in this area to be able to make these uh, changes and make these, uh, you know, moves for their game to be performant as they could be. But I'll digress. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. Appreciate you guys' time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.